This is the history of Warren Titchen Childs. They were living in Blue Water. Marion was a baby, and Doris Sider was born in 1926. In the house William built on the north side of town, and in the winter they would live in Grandma Emma C's adobe house on the south side of town of Blue Water. Kenneth, Howard, and Grace was living with them too. Kenneth was about 14, Howard 11, and Grace 9. Warren was born May 1, 1928 to William Warren Childs and Doris Emma Titchen in Blue Water, New Mexico. In 1930, the whole family moved to Salt Lake City and lived in Sandy. Horace Stevens stayed with them for a while, at periods of time. Grandma Amanda Taylor died in 1930. William left Salt Lake and went to Blue Water to help Elman bring her body back to Ogden for burial. William moved to Union Midvale, Utah, worked odd jobs during the Depression. He was a gardener in the bakery, and he worked as an ambulance driver. Grandma MSC came to live in Utah from New Mexico. Warren was sick for a spell. William cared for him till he got well. They all moved back to Blue Water, New Mexico in 1935 in a little black car. Dad had bought a new car. Several times William drove the family to General Conference in Salt Lake City. They would stop in Monticello, Utah, visit Amy Black for a few days, and they drove mostly on dirt roads, and they would get muddy, and it was a mess uh, to drive all the way to Salt Lake. Many of the Titchen relatives lived in Blue Water, and so Dorside and Warren and Marion got to meet their relatives. Marion played the trombone and Warren played the trumpet. William raised animals in a large garden for food. William went to La Honda, California to work as a gardener in 1939, and Dorsema took the kids to Monticello. William worked and they lived in Redwood City, and I guess Lurie was born there. And uh, World War II started in 1941. They moved back to Monticello. William works and hurts his foot, and they go to Gallup, New Mexico, where Doris Emma works in Fort Wingate, counting ammunition. They move back to Blue Water in Grandma Emma C.'s house. Warren played the harmonica. Warren and Doris Sida would herd the milk cows in greener pastures. Warren and Doris Sida would get some old wagon wheel rims and run down the street with them, turning them with sticks. William moved to Blanding as drought was terrible in New Mexico. William would be up at four in the morning to milk cows and make fires to heat the home. Music was a common thing in their home. Warren, William and Warren loved music. Warren told me about his grade school in New Mexico. One kid bragged, no one is big enough to pull my pants down. Well, moments later, the kid's pants were hanging on the flagpole. Warren was great in track and field, a high jumper and a sprinter. He was six foot two and very thin. He told me he had a horse, saddle, and holster, rifle. He crossed old man Nielsen's property. He was chewed out by the old man, but saw that my dad was packing guns and changed his tone very quickly. He told me he had the boy when he was a boy scout, they had planned to tip old man Nielsen's hot house over. They made sure Mr. Nielsen heard it. Old man Nielsen sat, sat in his hot house with his shotgun. The boys came up from behind it and tipped it over and split. Warren rode his horse and was eating a cream pie when a train came through Blue Water and it let out a loud whistle. And the horse took off running. The pie went into my dad's face and he kept trying to find the reins of his horse. When Warren went on a mission to the western states and he meets Ruth Gihada, another missionary. He was discouraged, told me he could not speak Spanish and was starving. Add, add more water to the rice, he would say. One day he decided to go home. He started walking home. His mission president picked him up and said, I'm going to conference. Come with me and if you decide to go home afterwards, we'll send you home. Warren finally stood up to bear his testimony in conference and he said he was determined to speak Spanish and he just began speaking the language. His companion 
that was sitting on the front row couldn't believe what he was hearing and his mouth was wide open. When Warren finally sat down, his companion elbowed him and told him, El every other door elder child. He finished his mission and he wrote to Ruth Gijada in San Diego. They decided to get married. Warren drove all the way to San Diego and returned to Salt Lake where they were married in the temple in October 1951. They lived in Blanding and he died when he fell off a truck of lumber and the lumber, green lumber fell on top of him. A priesthood blessing and a strong desire brought him back to life. He told me ten, many times he had died and saw his body as he was above it. He was drafted into the Marine Corps without a medical examination. They were really tough on him, made him swim with a cast and he almost drowned. They made him post guard duty all night for almost drowning. Marion and Doris and Warren lived in Grandma Titchen's old house after Grandma Emma C. died. Warren lived in Blue Water and worked in Anaconda processing nuclear material in barrels that weighed about 600 pounds. One day he had a metal sliver enter his eye. He went to the doctor and got it taken out, took the day off for work, and he said it's too great of a day to sleep in, so he went running. He loved the mountains. He sprang his ankle and came limping back home, hopped up and hit his head on the doorway and crawled back into bed and just stayed there the rest of the day. Warren loved the bow and arrow and he would, he would shoot a compound bow that was 120 pounds. Nobody else could pull it that I knew of. Ivan is first born and Ruth Ann ended up playing with one of his handguns and Ivan was shot. He was only five years old at the time. It devastated Warren and Ruth. Doris Emma Child also passed away at this, about the same time in Manti and Merrill was born shortly after in the same month, all in the month of April in 1958. Warren and Ruth moved to Nephi, where Mildred was born, then to Monticello, Utah, where Linda was born. Warren worked hard to provide for his family. In 1965, they decided to move to San Diego, a national city where Mark Child was born. Ruth inherits a large ranch, we move to Spring Valley, Linda Vista, where Ruthann gets in lots of fights with kids and Merrill is bullied. Warren worked for a carnation milk company. They moved to La Gloria and lived there for about six months. Warren eats some turtle soup and gets really sick and almost dies. We get a jeep and trailer and we travel all the way down to La Paz, Mexico. It takes about uh, several days to get there. Warren becomes a branch president and Ruth becomes a Relief Society president. Warren goes to Via Constitución where the Mormon saints are poor and he checks on them. He was asked by the mission president to do so. We move to Los Aripas, about 15 kilometers outside of La Paz, where Warren and Ruth try to build a house, but eventually that falls through and they all fly. we all fly back to Tijuana and we cross the border into San Diego in about 1974. We move to Lemington, Utah, where Warren tries to do mining marble, searching for opportunities. We move several months later to Milan, New Mexico, right by Grants. I remember participating in high school sports and my brother also, going deer hunting with Warren and Marion. Old memories. Try as we will to get into the turquoise business. After a couple of years, we moved back to San Diego area to Santee, then to the lakeside. He, Warren tried to mine turquoise in Mexico and to polish it in San Diego. Warren loves New Mexico and Utah because of the mountains. Ruth loves San Diego because of the nice weather. Marion decides to go on a mission to Texas. Then we move to Nephi, Utah, then Levan and uh, Warren and Merrill go out hunting deer. Memories that, of fire building and a dad and son together was a great memory. Merrill goes on a mission to Venezuela, Caracas. They moved to San Diego and stayed there the rest of their life. Ruth just loved it there. Warren and Ruth struggled to make a living. They adopt Doris Emma's baby, Brian Child. Eventually they start getting ill. Ruth's health starts to deteriorate. Warren and Ruth live in apartments. Ruth dies after several strokes, and Warren 
is at a loss. He goes to Mexico, plays music. Eventually he is hit over the head and robbed, and he was hemorrhaging, and eventually they couldn't stop the bleeding. He dies in July of 2000. He had a tumor in his head the size of a baseball. It did affect his judgment later in life and his family. Warren loved to play his guitar and harmonica or sing. He liked to paint later in life and had a good sense of humor. Was kind to animals. He was good. He was a good man that had testimony of the gospel, and so did Ruth. Ruth was a strong, caring woman. She cared about her family. She would love to cook meals on Sundays, especially, and uh, just love to be there for her husband. <laughs> 